o'clock. I'd like to call the meeting of the City Planning Commission to order. Chad, would you please call the roll? Mayor Vandersteen. Here. Alderperson Boren. Here. Ryan Sazma. Here. Jerry Jones. Here. Here. Marilyn Montemeyer. Here. Dave Hoffman. Here. And Don Sveton. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, next item is to introduce the uh, members of the committee and staff. Dave? Dave Hoffman, citizen member. Mike Vandersteen, mayor and chairman. Chad Pelashek, planning director. Steve Sokolowski from the Planning Department. Marilyn Montemayor, citizen member. John Ryan Sanzo, Department of Public Works. John Street Town, member. Welcome, everyone. Uh, does anybody go on ahead online? Uh, Alderman Jim Boren of the 10th District. I'm the older person on the commission. Jerry Jones, citizen member and vice chairman. Does anybody have a, a potential conflict of interest with any of the items on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll co uh, continue with the minutes. Uh, the, uh, we need to approve the minutes of the Planning Commission meeting from August 11th. I accept the motion. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Aye. Next is items for discussion and possible action. Item 3.1 is a conditional use and variance application by Spirit Halloween to temporarily operate at 518 South Taylor Drive, the former Shopco facility. Steve. All right, uh, Jason Burke and Amy Reinhardt from uh, Spirit Halloween are here. And what they're taking a look at is they're looking to temporarily operate Spirit Halloween uh, retail establishment from the former Shopco facility at 518 South Taylor Drive. Um, Spirit Halloween is proposing to occupy the Shopco facility um, from August until November, and the operating hours would be Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., and then Sunday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., and all the retail activity is taking place indoors. There would be no outdoor activity. Um, the spirit stores are stocked with everything you can imagine for Halloween, including costumes, masks, wigs, indoor and outdoor decor items, animatronics, makeup, collectibles, props, and depth, depth accessories. And with its so much fun, it's scary mission statement, spirit provides an entertaining and interactive in-store in experience for all. Um, spirit has pioneered the rollout of a national and seasonal Halloween operation that has grown to over 1,400 locations and strip centers, malls, and freestanding locations in the United States and Canada. Um, and at the heart of Spirit Halloween is Spirit of Children, which is established in 2006. And the Spirit of Children raises money in store and online through vendors and donations to support the Child Life Department at hospitals across the United States. And the program has raised approximately uh, $65 million over that time that's used um, to help the children with educational items and toys used for distraction during their medical procedures and more. Uh, they are looking at a couple of variances. One is to operate the Spirit Halloween for approximately 70 days. Typically, a temporary use is um, allowed for 12 days unless you come and get the <coughs> conditional use and variance from the plan commission. And they're looking at uh, having a, the banner installed, a 32-square-foot banner for that time as well. So staff is recommending approval of the proposal, and the applicants are, I can take any questions, and the applicants are here as well. Thank you very much for that report, Steve. Did you want to add anything to that? Um, just simply, we've been operating since 2001 with, um, we're a sister company of Spencer Gifts. Um, we, this, this operation um, entails like many year-round employees as well as many seasonal employees. 
Um, this year we're looking at 1,400 locations. This is, I believe, the first year we'll be in Sheboygan. Um, we have standard procedures for our employees with like COVID related things too. We have that all squared away. Um, we actually use some products called Defender, which is what most hospital grade uses. So um, cleaning shouldn't be an issue. We have floor markers in our store to make sure there's social distancing. We have a lot of disposable microfiber wipes with that Defender to help clean our locations. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions you guys have for us. I know he touched a little bit on the spirit of children. That's something near and dear to my heart. Um, we, all the money raised in stores go to local children's hospitals. So all the money raised here in Sheboygan would benefit the uh, Wisconsin's Children's Hospital. So it all stays local. Um, also on top of the money we raise, we also um, get donations from our vendors and then Spirit picks up the tab. We actually, every year have a Halloween party in the hospitals for the children that can't leave. Um, some of it might be their last Halloween. So. Um, they each get a goodie bag, they get to select a costume, and they get to forget about their sicknesses for a while, just if uh -huh. it's for the day. So it's nice. very near and dear to my heart. Well, thank you much for that information. Uh, commissioners, any questions or motions? I've got a question, Mayor. Please go ahead, Jim. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, under the circumstances with the COVID and the type of merchandise that you're selling, particularly the masks, are the masks uh, going to be individually wrapped? And what if a child wants to try on a mask and decides the child the child decides he doesn't want that mask or it doesn't fit? Uh, how are those concerns going to be taken care of for your customers? Um, in store, they are not allowed to try on masks. We have signage in the store that we don't allow for that. Our fitting rooms are currently closed because of COVID. We don't want any kind of germs to be um, you know shared. Um, and then anything that is, we do allow returns, but anything that is returned, there is a seven day quarantine process for that. So that gets pulled off the floor and quarantined and then would be disinfected and put back on the floor. But if like a, if a child were to try on a mask on the sales floor, that item is removed from the sales floor and it is quarantined, but we do have signage up and then we do have employees walking around, you know, cordially reminding them not to try on these items. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Steve. Alderman Bourne, um, you had mentioned some things about the COVID policy and in addition to what got attached to the documents uh, on board docs, they did provide some additional information as a handout um, that they have here as well that they're providing to their customers as well. Thank you. Any other? Thank you. Any other discussion? Yes, I have, but just an in general question. Go ahead, Dave. Um, does the city plan on authorizing trick or treat this year? We haven't made a decision on that. Okay. We uh, talked to the public health officer and we're waiting for their guidance. Okay. Because obviously that may have to affect that. Guidance. Okay. And entertain a motion. I move Don? to approve subject to staff recommendations. Well, second. Okay. Uh, we have a motion on the floor. Uh, one last call for discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, or do you have to call? Roll, roll call. call. Please go ahead, Chad. Mayor Vanderstein. Aye. Alderperson Boren. Aye. Ryan Sazma. Aye. Jerry Jones. Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer. Aye. David Hoffman. Aye. Don Svitan. Aye. All eyes. Motion passes. Congratulations and Thank good you. luck with the, uh, the, the operation there. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Moving on, item 3.2 is a conditional use and variance application by Caesar Crump to operate the U-Haul from Community Auto Sales Lot located at 1648 Calumet Drive. Steve, do you have a report for us? Yeah, uh, Caesar Crump is here, uh, the uh, owner of uh, um, Community Auto Sales and, and uh, looking to be the, the uh, new manager of the U-Haul in the city of Sheboygan, as well as Dan Salm, who looks like he is a representative from U-Haul. Um, so what we're taking a look at is 1648 Calumet Drive. This property has been used as an auto sales lot for many years. Um, Mr. Crump's been there for about a year, around right now. Yep, yep. yep. and so, so um, recently, 
Uh, further to the north on Calumet Drive is Mike's Expert Auto. And Mike's Expert Auto previously had the U-Hauls um, at his site. It's my understanding he may be <coughs> retiring and, and no longer is using that. So uh, Mr. Crump <coughs> had met with the U-Haul officials and thought it might be uh, that his site might be a good site to move it a little bit further south because he had some room. Um, uh, basically what he's taking a look at is um, uh, the U-Haul dealership uh, in this area would still be an asset. A lot of people already are familiar with uh, the general location, so you'd like to move it here. Uh, Community Auto Sales has signed a contract with U-Haul and was trained through the U-Haul University, and their job description consists of dispatching, receiving U-Haul equipment, and completing rental transactions, as well as maintaining all the equipment in a neat and orderly fashion. And Community Auto Sales it kind of indicates, can kind of see on the site plan before you right now, doesn't show many vehicles at this point in time, but there could be approximately about 60 to 70 cars there at one time. Um, they typically have had about 15 to 20, and as indicating that there would likely be about maybe 16 pieces, 16 to 20 pieces of equipment that would include moving trucks of various sizes, trailers of various sizes. Um, so the only real issue that staff had was just the maintenance and the uh, maintaining the site from a, a display perspective. Um, and so a couple of comments that staff was going to make to the plan commission was uh, the applicant has indicated there would be about 16 to 20 um, uh, U-Haul equipment. There could be uh, 15 cars. I didn't know offhand if it made sense to limit the total number of uh, cars and uh, U-Haul equipment, say, to a number like 50. That was something that was going to be mentioned. I just wanted to have maybe the applicant see if he would have any concerns with a number like that. Um, but that way, instead of having the, the lot completely jammed, packed with everything, there's still enough for the U-Haul and the auto sales, but it's just not super tight like we've seen in some other locations. Mm -hmm. So it would be interested to hear what the applicant would have to say or with the, that concept. Um, the only other aspect is we just want to make sure that when the vehicles or the U-Haul equipment is displayed at that drive, um, Calumet Drive is a four-lane arterial, so it's really important that people coming in and out of there have that good visibility to that um, <clears throat> to the road, so that it's not blocked and they can't see. So that was just a general comment. So staff was recommending approval, and uh, the only um, item that I thought was uh, up for discussion was that condition number 17. And right now, that reads a total number of community auto sales and U-Haul vehicles and equipment permitted on the site is 50. The plan commission can approve it that way. We could ask the applicant if he has any concerns or, or comments with regards to that, and the plan commission can decide to keep that in there, change that, or take it out. Thank you for that report, Steve. Mr. Crump, could you respond to that uh, 50 number? Um, well, 50 with the with the U-Haul equipment. Me, I was thinking like like you said, for the most with the U-Haul equipment, it's probably going to be around about 20 um, piece of equipment at, at a time. Uh, with the vehicles, with the uh, community auto sales LLC, we um, we basically keep around 15 cars as an average. You know, we don't we don't go too overboard with that because we keep it on basically one section of the lot, and um and you know it's been going well in that way. And that's the basically in the order that we want to keep it, and um uh, but we, like I said, because we had like such um, space still available for U-Haul, and it was basically such an opportunity uh, because at the same time with Mike uh, basically possibly retiring and everything. We want to keep everything like like local for the community, something that's going to be convenient for them. And, um, and you know, like I said, me being in Sheboygan for uh, 10 years, like I said, I always want to be a part of the growth of Sheboygan. And I, and I feel, hey, why can't I just jump in right here and try to help out the community with, uh, you know, with the lot? Because, like I said, we do have the space and everything. And like I say, with a lot size, that's, uh, we can get, like, you know, we would talk, I, I say uh, 70, 80 cars, but um, the car lot's supposed to uh, be able to fit about uh, around 100 cars. But um, like I said, we're only doing like 15 cars, and we was doing, you know, and we had this extra space that, like I said, I thought would be perfect uh, for U-Haul. And so, we, like I said, we approached by U-Haul. We was uh, trained by U-Haul. And, and like I said, we were just given this opportunity, and like I said, we just want to be a part of, like, just assisting the community. So, Mayor. Yes, Steve. So, uh, Mr. Crump, any, yes. any issue in terms of that? total number of 50 um is is does that seem like if you're talking 15 cars and 20 pieces that's only like four you know uh, yeah. uh four, 
does, does 50 seem like a reasonable number to you? Are any thoughts, comments with regards to that number? With, with, well, like I said, with 50, I don't think we're going to actually, I don't think we're going to need 50. Yeah. Because we're going to, uh, but I think 50 is, is, is reasonable. Sure. But, um, you know, because I still, I want to keep it, like I said, we got to keep Sheboygan beautiful. I, Absolutely. Like I said, that's one thing that I loved about Sheboygan when I've been here. Like I said, I'm from Chicago. I, basically, I, I call myself, I've been Sheboyganized. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a place that I love. And like I say, part of, part of the growth of Sheboygan is keeping it, keeping it beautiful. And, uh, and just, I want to, with the, the 50, I don't want 50 because, like you said, I don't want to cram the space either. I want it to be comfortable. I want our customers to be able to come in and move around and, and just everything just be presentable, to, you know. And I want to look like a productive, and, you know, uh, like I said, business, you know, for, sure. for, the, for the community. So. So I guess I wouldn't object if we went with the 50 because that still leaves him some flexibility if he adds some more cars and still gives him decent amount of space, I think. So if that's, you know, seems like Mr. Crump is okay with that, so it might be something to consider. Thank you, Steve. Any other uh, questions from the committee? I'd entertain a motion. I've got a question, Mayor. Please go ahead, Jim. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm not that familiar with the with the parking on Calumet Drive. Are all the customers uh, required to uh, to drive into the property for both the car lot and the U-Haul rental, or is there any parking at all permitted on Calumet Drive? I can respond, Steve. Um, there, there is no parking on Calumet Drive. Um, basically, you have um, Quick Trip. You have Schultz's restaurant kind of in that area. You have Rotorol across the street. So there is no on-street parking. It is all off-street. And uh, with that 50 vehicles, there would still be enough on-site parking for customers to enter off of Calumet Drive and have places to park on-site. Thank you. Any other discussion or motions? I'll move to approve subject to staff recommendation. Good luck. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Ma'am. Is there I'll a second? I'll second. Thank yeah. you very much. If I can ask a clarifying question, is please. it with 50? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Thank you. Okay. One last call for discussion. Seeing none, would uh, Chad please call the roll? Mayor Vandersteen? Aye. Older person born? Aye. Ryan Sazma? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer? Aye. Dave Hoffman? Aye. Don Sfitan? Aye. All eyes. Right. Motion passes. Good right. luck Thank with you your again, project. Thank you, Gansita Sheboygan. I do appreciate it. Yep. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Take yep. care. Thank You're welcome. Yes, yep. Excuse me. Okay. Item 3.3 is a conditional use and variance application by the Right Way Club to construct a new building addition and remodel the existing facility at 4627 South 12th Street. Steve? All right. Uh, Terrence Doyle from the Right Way Club is here, and Chris Herzog, the architect from ACE Builders, is here. So uh, we had seen Terrence a little while back for their pavilion that they had constructed, and that is uh, probably can see in some, well, you can see in that picture right there. Um, at that point in time, there was discussion about the possibility of doing some additions or remodeling and different things at the Right Way Club. It sounds to me like they've gotten some good funding of late and they've been able to come back to the plan commission with a, a proposed addition and remodel to the existing facility. So the Right Way Club, and I'm sure Terrence can probably explain this better than I can, is uh, a nonprofit organization whose main objective is, is to provide meeting rooms for 12-step recovery groups and to facilitate a social atmosphere that's safe, healthy, and interactive in, aid, in the aid on the, of the recovery process, which involves family, friends, and community. The Right Way Club is a needed asset in Sheboygan, and all the services they provide are at no cost to the individual and in need of assistance. They strongly encourage responsibility to the community and giving back in a form of service from their members, it, it, and that's one of their tenets of recovery. The building expansion will provide space for activities focused around recovery from addiction and enhances their ability to serve their uh, customers. The, construct, the addition itself is about 2,000 square feet. At, to the south and west sides of the existing facility, and the expansion is designed to blend into the existing structural framework, but the addition as well as the exi 
existing exterior finishes will be upgraded from a design perspective and that the um, architecture review board had looked at the plans that you see before you and those were approved last <coughs> evening. There's no changes to the operation uh, other than to enhance the organization's reach into the community by offering updated amenities, barrier-free entry and facilities, and the ability to offer more flexible meeting schedule within the same designated club hours. Rightway Club has been operating at its current location for 50 years. The facility and grounds are well kept, and it's belief that the building expansion will be an attractive enhancement to the property and neighborhood. Um, uh, a couple of just general staff comments. There was a, there's a little bit of uh, wetlands on the property um, that the applicant ha uh, acknowledges and is staying out of in terms of uh, the construction. There is a large um, uh, uh, storm sewer that runs through their site, and that's kind of impacted the location of the proposed addition. Um, I believe as part of the demolition that some of the structures that may be encroaching on the easement are gonna be demolished and no, will no longer be encroaching on that. And then again, they were in here in uh, uh, 19 with the uh, pavilion that they use um, for fundraising and outdoor events, and it's an attractive, comfortable place to relax and conduct small group discussions with recovering purses out of doors and with everything going on. I know that's been working out for you as far as what we're all dealing with right now. Um, there are a couple of variances. One is to have a building side yard setback of 9.1 feet. There, uh, the Rightway Club is in the process of working with Sheboygan County, who owns the property to the north. And it's about a six acre parcel that I believe they may use if Weeding Creek ever gets improved, that they may use that parcel for additional storm sewer. And so uh, the right way club is working to get an additional 10 feet along that north property line. So eventually that, si that side yard setback would be 19 feet. But at this point in time, I think it's just a matter of uh, dotting I's and crossing T's. But because it hasn't happened yet, we're taking that variance to that nine feet, which is what it is today. Um, and then uh, requesting a variance to the locational and buffer yard landscaping requirements. So staff is recommending approval subject to the conditions you have before you, and I can answer any questions and the applicants are here. Thank you very much, Steve. Mr. Doyle, would you like to add anything to that presentation? Uh, sure, Terrence Doyle, Railway Club. Um, just to update a little bit about the uh, 10 feet in the property line. I did receive a uh, uh, email from Emily Stewart from the county uh, at uh, the county treasurer and the clerk of courts are in the process of uh, uh, writing and uh, signing, signing and recording the deed as uh, they're working on that. So I will be dropping off a check tomorrow and that should be finished, closed up this, this week. So that was a, a great benefit that we ran into the opportunity to uh, get that 10 feet from the county because we originally looked at maybe getting some more land from them, but they are actually gonna fill in the uh, expand Weed and Creek and uh, widen the road there. So they're gonna actually use the other 6.8, six acres there for a double retention pond, which is really gonna be kind of nice because we were hoping they'd give us a whole bunch more land, but uh, <laughs> it didn't happen. But in essence, we're gonna get what we want because we're having this nice retention pond and still keep all, uh, all the nature behind us, which is really gonna be great. Uh, and we won't have to maintain it. They'll still maintain a retention <coughs> pond, so that turned out pretty nice. Um, just the uh, uh, basic thing, we have uh, 50 years, we actually uh, September 5th, we have our 50 year anniversary coming up. Uh, on, we have a uh, party out there for our 50 years. We actually have a gentleman who we'll be speaking at night, which was there 50 years ago and was uh, did some of the uh, plumbing work and, the, and things you know when the club was first developed. Uh, <laughs> And that would be nice. Uh, this Saturday night, we, we have a, uh, what we call a, uh, it's the uh, 12th Street Players. We have a little play put on it. So, uh, a one shot, one uh, shot uh, Macbeth uh, 20 minute uh, play put on by the uh, members of the club. They're just uh, activity. We trying to stay as much active in the community as we can. And we're a variety of different things we do. Uh, the pavilion is, uh, and both these are under a pavilion. We did it last year with a permit for the due to pavilion. That was a great choice because as we got into this year and doing the remodel, we were trying to decide, oh, remodel or pavilion. We did pavilion because we couldn't figure out how to get the ADA compliant in the building because we had a ramp inside the building because we're 18 inches below ground level. It was really a challenge, but uh, with uh, Chris's help and the redesign here, now we have a, a 
level entranceway throughout the whole building, no ramps anything inside, and it's, uh, it helps, uh, uh, everything's ADA compliant, and it, a lot of our members, not a lot of them, but we do have members that need that service, and it'll be uh, for going forward, which is great. We will, so a lot, of, a lot of good things happening with this uh, uh, complete uh, renovation and addition on here. Our, especially uh, the pavilion came in real handy this spring because of with the COVID and the, and the social distancing, we were able to have meetings outside and social distance to where our inside capacity went from 40 to 16. And, and that's, you know, we have, sometimes we have meetings of 20, sometimes 10, but you never know who shows up. So we have to uh, uh, be in compliance. And with a new expansion, it'll give us a lot more room just to compensate just for social distancing and. I'm anticipating for the next few years, this is gonna be a, a standard way of life here, the new normal, I guess, so. Uh, I don't, uh, fan, uh, that's all I have, unless you have some questions, otherwise. Thank you very much. Did you wanna add anything, sir? I, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, about the project itself, uh, okay. pertaining to the structure or design or anything like that. Other than that, I, I think Terrence did a fantastic job describing the uh, intent of the club and what they provide. Commissioners, the any discussion? I have a couple comments, Mayor. Please go ahead, Jim. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Right Way Club is in my District 10, and uh, the Right Way Club is a great asset to the city of Sheboygan. Uh, the pavilion has been a great addition to the property. Uh, it looks great. Uh, and just want to tell Mr. Doyle and his staff to keep up the good work. And with that, I'd like to make a motion to approve subject to the conditions. Thank you Thank very you. much for that motion. And is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. One last call for any discussion. Seeing none, Chad, would you please call the roll? Mayor Vandersteen? Aye. Golder Person Bourne? Aye. Aye. Ryan Sasma? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer? Aye. Dave Hoffman? Aye. Don Sfitan? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Good luck with your project. Thank you. Looks like a good one. Thank you for coming tonight. The next item is item 3.4, RO number 53 of 2021 and, and GO 16 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen amending the city's future land use map of the Sheboygan Comprehensive Plan to change the land use classification of property located on the north west corner of Broadway and South Business Drive, a portion of parcel 59281513391 from class multifamily residential to class community mixed use classification. Steve. All right, uh, Troy Melizva from Quick Trip is here. And um, what we're taking a look at is, you guys are probably familiar with the site plan that you see before you, which was the Oscar Apartments development the old Vandevard site. Um, what we're taking a look at is the highlighted portion, which indicates as lot B. Um, as part of that Green Street development for the apartments, that section of the parcel was always shown as potential commercial development. And so now um, at that time, they rezoned the entire Vandevard parcel um, into from uh, urban industrial to urban residential with the idea that they may have to rezone uh, different parcels down the line. They didn't quite know size or exactly where or what um, those parcels were going to be. So that's why they rezoned the entire uh, urban residential. Now Green Street has worked with Quick Trip who has uh, indicated they are interested in purchasing that parcel and are working to do that. And the first step that they need to do in order to do that is to rezone this property from urban residential to urban commercial and to change the uh, comprehensive plan designation from multifamily residential to community mixed use, um, which would allow for such a zone change to take place. So anytime um, uh, the, the city of Sheboygan comprehensive plan has to be consistent with the zoning. So the first thing that we need to do is to change the comp plan, which is the first item that we're talking about. And then the next item will be the rezone and the um, 
uh, staff report is virtually the same for each of them. Basically, we're taking a look at this lot B, which is otherwise known as lot two. It was of the certified survey map and looking to change that comp plan and rezone designation to allow Quick Trip to do uh, uh, get the zoning they need to eventually come back to us for a conditional use permit for the development. So staff was recommending approval of the comprehensive plan <clears throat> map change as well as the rezone. Thank you for that report, Steve. Would you like to offer any other information? Sure, thank you, Mayor. Troy Malazova, uh, real estate manager, Quick Trip, 1626 Oak Street, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Uh, just to kind of uh, summarize or piggyback of what Steve had in the staff report, uh, we're excited for the opportunity to be a part of this uh, exciting infill project, uh, redevelopment project of a, a former uh, block plant here in the city. Uh, at the signalized intersection, I think it'd be a great opportunity to rezone and adjust the comp plan for commercial on that intersection. And looking forward to working with staff and the city to bring forward a plan to put a quick trip facility that could serve the surrounding areas with our uh, known good guest service, uh, depth of products and offerings that quick trip is known for that we've been well received in the city and looking forward to grow and see this as a good opportunity for us to be of service. So. Any questions, happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any discussion? Go ahead, Marilyn. Oh, thank you. And I know this doesn't have anything to do with Quick Trip, but I just wanted to say I really like that name, the Oscar development, because it actually means something. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I guess I'd entertain a motion then if there's no discussion. I would like to make the motion to approve subject to staff recommendations. Thank you. Thank you for that motion and support. One last call for any discussion. Yeah, I just have a Go question. Ahead, Dave. Uh, does, does that kind of make the, the entrance to the quick trip? Does that make that a through street then through the Oscar, or is that uh, like a gated type of situation? Steve, um, so that will be um, it, it's a private drive, and so so it it, it definitely will be open and will be shared by both the people visiting and living in the Oscar, as well as visiting and um, utilizing quick trip services. So it's not a public street, but in essence, it's, kind of, it's a private street, but it's kind of being used publicly. So we won't have to like maintain or do anything with it. That'll be up to the owners of the property to do, but it's used in that fashion. Okay, thank it'll, you. It'll also have a different name than so on the north end of it, it's either 15th or 16th. I think it's 15th. And so in the private development, it'll have a private street name. It will not be the extension of South 16th Street. Okay. So when you, basically, when you turn north to go into Quick Trip, you're on private property at that point? You're on a private drive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very, very similar to like, say, the Oak Creek Apartments by Horace Mann. When you come off a of union, and you have those two apartment complexes, that's a private road okay. you're going into that. So it's a very similar concept. So it, it'll be pretty obvious that you're not going to go flying through there, right? Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If there's no other discussion, Chad, please call the roll. Mayor Vandersteen? Aye. Older person Bourne? Aye. Ryan Sazma? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer? Aye. Dave Hoffman? Aye. Don Sviton? Aye. All eyes. Motion passes. Congratulations and good luck with getting this project started. We have one more item related to that. Okay. Let's move on to item 3.5, which is RO number 53 of 2021 uh, and GO 17 by Alderperson Sorensen amending the city's uh, official zoning map of the Sheboygan Zoning Ordinance to change the use district classification of the property located at the northwest corner of Broadway and South Business Drive, portion of parcel 59281513391 from class urban residential to UR12 to class urban commercial classification. Steve? I think we're going to just make a motion. It's the same staff report I did for the other one. The, the first part was the comp plan amendment. Now we're doing the actual rezone. So staff is recommending approval of the proposed rezone. Thank you. Commissioners, I'd look for a motion. 
motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Second. Uh, one last call for discussion. Seeing no discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair, anyone aye. opposed? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. I, I forgot to vote aye. <laughs> Item 3.6 is resolution number 72 of 2021 by Alderperson Boren authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a public access easement agreement between the Wild Leslie Real Estate Holdings LLC, Visit Sheboygan Inc. and the City of Sheboygan regarding public and pedestrian access across the property located near 826 South 8th Street, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Steve. Chad will take this one. Right. So this is a uh, public access easement uh, primarily uh, for the uh, Visit Sheboygan and the city to apply for some grant funds to construct a science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics center. So as part of the visitor center, the plan is to build a... Um, and on those that are on the screen, you can see the site plan, but um, to build a, what we're calling a science in the sky, which would be a elevated platform that would project into the Sheboygan River. It would house a um, greenhouse, a classroom, some um, solar panels, wind turbines. So it would be a structure that would be off the grid um, and as an educational uh, place for both uh, local students as well as tourists that are coming in because the new and upcoming kind of tourism thing is ecotourism. So the idea is to have the science on the sky, also to have learning on land, which would be green infrastructure related demonstration gardens, butterfly gardens, those types of classroom <clears throat> space to try to highlight what, you know, a ways that you can kind of preserve and, and sustain the Great Lakes and, and particularly the Sheboygan River and uh, Lake Michigan. So. Um, in order to move forward and apply for particularly a Wisconsin Coastal Management Grant, um, it, it has to be on public land. So Leslie Kohler, who is the developer of the Visitor Center property and is known as the Wild Leslie Real Estate <coughs> Holdings, um, has agreed to uh, basically grant this access easement of this property, private property, back over or back to the city so that we can uh, use, keep it in a public domain and use it to write some grants to try to bring this um, project to the lakefront. So um, staff was recommending approval of it. Um, this has been in the works for a while. We're doing some fundraising and we're hopes, hoping that this will uh, break ground sometime early next year. Thank you for that explanation, Chad. Are there any uh, discussion from the committee members? Mayor, go ahead, Jim. Uh, I would just make a motion to approve, <clears throat> subject to conditions. Thank you for that motion. Is there a second? Second. Second, Huffman. Any other discussion on the motion? Uh, this is very minor, but is there a typo on the resolution? <clears throat> Wild Leslie? No, that's the way it is. Okay. Just, I, I was just curious about that. Okay. Seeing no other discussion. <laughs> well, Chad, you want to call the roll? Odd. Yes. Sure, Mayor Vanderstein. Aye. Alderperson Bourne. Aye. Ryan Sazma. Aye. Jerry Jones. Aye. Marilyn Montemayor. Aye. David Hoffman. Aye. Don Sviton. Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Uh, our next meeting is planned for September 15th, 2020. Jerry? Uh, make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much, everybody. Hey, Mayor, could I make one comment? Please do. Hey, for the guys on the line, too, um, the, the next meeting is going to be on September 15th, which appears to be the third Tuesday. But the first, uh, we always follow the first council meeting. The first council meeting of the month is until, actually, it's Labor Day, which is, I think, the 8th. So that's why it is going to be on September 15th. So it'll be September 15th, and I believe 
September 29th, and you know, for our meetings. So just a heads up on that. Thanks for pointing that out, Steve. Thank you.